Welcome back. We have an advanced video for you on the Honeywell Jade Economizer controller setup. If you've not yet watched the basics video, you should probably do that. That'll cover you for most projects. The stuff we're gonna do today is for when you wanna dive a little deeper. So let's get started. I did wanna finish up a little bit something on the basic setup screens. That is a little bit more confusing and more advanced, right? So we have the uh, fan low uh, actuator position for minimum ventilation, and we have the fan high actuator position for minimum ventilation. And we talked about those in the previous video. We said that you can have a different for CO2 and multi-speed fan and all that stuff. The hard part though, is that all of these minimum positions are not in CFM and they're not in percent damper open. They are in voltage and that confuses a lot of folks. So I wanna cover it a little bit. So right now I'm showing you fan low actuator position 3.6 volts, right? And then the high one is 2.8 volts. So let's keep that in mind and we'll go through this here. All right, so for starters, the way this works is these actuators go from two to 10 volts DC. That means two volts means 0%. Close the damper. 10 volts means 100%. Open the damper wide open. So for starters, the middle of the range is not five. I know that's annoying, right? Six is the middle, that's 50%. Four volts would be 25%, right? Eight volts would be 75% and all these increments in between. So that's one thing we got to keep in mind. Um, so let's say the minimum position, let's say for argument's sake, I want this thing to be 10%, right? So what voltage do I set that for? Two volts would be closed, four volts would be 25. So I know it's somewhere in between there. The way it works is that from two to 10 volts, that's an eight volt span, right? And I want to go 10%, 10% of eight is 0.8. For those of you guys that love math. I know like it's kind of a little bit weird and a little bit annoying, right? But I want to set that thing for 0.8. But it's not 0.8, it's 0.8 above the minimum. So 2.8 volts, that's 10%. So our default high fan speed was 10%. 3.6% or 3.6 volts, excuse me, is another 0.8 above that, right? So 0.2 to get to three, 0.8. So that's 20%. If I wanted 15%, that would be 3.2 volts. So instead of doing this math all the time, you may want to just make a chart like this once and never think about the math again, because most of us aren't here for the math fun, right? So 5%, that would be 2.4 volts. 25% would be 4.0, right? Like we said earlier. And you probably should never have more than 25% on a rooftop economizer, so it can't handle that anyway. So if you kind of keep this in mind or take a picture of that and save it, you don't have to really do this math ever again. Um, but that's the way that works. The other piece of that is that people get a little messed up. Low needs to be a bigger number than high. People don't like that, obviously. The reason being is when I'm at low fan speed, I'm moving less air. So I have to open the damper up more to suck the same amount of CFM into the building. So as the fan speed slows down, I have to open the damper more. As the fan speed speeds up, I gotta lower the damper down. So it always needs to stay inverted like that. Don't think it was wrong in the defaults or something. This number is always bigger, that number is always smaller for low and high speed fan. All right, now let's continue on with the real advanced settings. Now we're gonna dive into the advanced settings, the actual advanced settings. So in the Honeywell controller and the J controller here, there's a separate menu for advanced. And the reason they do that is because generally speaking, you don't have to mess with that stuff. So for like 90%, 99% of the jobs, you never have to come into these screens, never think about it. But you should know how they work because you may need to change it on a certain job or you may need to tweak something to kind of band aid a problem on a job or something like that. So we'll go through them. So I'm on set point screen right now. I'll scroll down to system setup and then advanced setup and I will press the enter key. Now I'm in the advanced setup. The first one is mixed air temperature low limit. This is basically a mixed air temperature freeze stat. The default is 45 degrees. If it's below 45 degrees, it's gonna assume there's a freeze condition and it's gonna go ahead and start closing that damper off. That's probably a pretty decent number. Uh, you can change that if you want to, but 45 is probably a pretty decent number. Um, if you scroll down one, freeze position close. So if I get below 45, close the damper. If you want to, you can have it go to the minimum when it's below 45. That doesn't make any sense to me because I should already be at the minimum. If it's that cold in the duct, 
I should already be at the minimum. But nonetheless, you can change that on here if you needed to. The CO2 sensor, I don't have one on the screen here because I don't have one wired in, but there's a zero and a span as you can see in the manual here. Uh, zero to 2000 parts per million is what almost every single commercial grade CO2 sensor runs at. So you would leave that alone in most applications. If you had something special you bought, then you might come on, come in here and change that. Stage three delay. All right, so what that does is a normal economizer sequence. If it's a nice economizer day outside, stage one modulates the damper open. Stage two of the thermostat calling for cooling would turn on compressor number one and nothing would turn on compressor number two. It could still operate on a non-economizer day, but on economizer day, stage one is the damper, stage two is compressor one. So nothing turns on compressor two. What this will do is after two hours of stage two being called for, the economizer controller will assume stage one compressor is not gonna ever get it done. It's broken, it's burnt out, something bad happened, and it's gonna go ahead and energize the other compressor and bail these people out in the building. I like it to be at two hours. A lot of techs change it and make it 15 minutes. I don't like that. I get their logic. They wanna satisfy the problem sooner, make the complaint never happen. Fine, I get that. I want the complaint to happen. I want the occupant to feel pain on this kind of day, which would happen in March or April, instead of it happening in July when they really do need two compressors simultaneously, and then they find out one of them is trashed. So I'd rather it happen earlier in the year, hence the two hour delay. Things get a little bit uncomfortable in the space. They call for service and somebody can troubleshoot this early on. So I would leave it at two hours. I would not make that any faster. Uh, shut down damper position. By default, this damper will be closed if you wire something to the shutdown input, like a duct smoke detector. If you want it to go open instead, you can do that. That would not be normal. Maybe you got a weird job. Maybe there's some kind of uh, exhaust fume hoods or something and the building occupant says hey when we turn on all these giant exhaust fume hoods we need as much makeup air coming in the building as possible we don't care about temperature we don't care about freezing pipes we need to purge air so people don't have a problem you can do that and force the damper to go wide open if you want to not normal uh supply fan uh delay you uh have a two-speed fan which we do in this case what will happen is that when the thermostat calls for stage one, we're operating the damper, but it only goes open, all, well, it goes open all the way, but the fan only goes so fast, we're on stage one. When the thermostat calls for stage two, the fan will ramp up to 100% capacity, and then you would turn the compressor on. What this will do is delay the compressor for five minutes by default, and say, you know what? I got all that extra airflow, 33% more airflow. Let's just see if 33% more airflow of my cold outside air gets the job done, and if after five minutes it does not, I'll turn the compressor on. So I would leave that at five minutes, but you could tweak it if you ever needed to. And then you have the ability to calibrate all these sensors. So mixed air, discharge air, return air, whichever ones you have on there, you can calibrate them. Uh, you can go plus or minus two and a half degrees. So let's say your mixed air temperature reading is uh, 56 degrees on your handheld probe, but the one in the controller says it's 54. But oh, that's off by two. You can come in here and go to mixed air, hit enter, you could change it and add those temperature degrees, wherever it needs to be. So I would sit here with my probe in my hand, this one's at 76, so let's say it's 76.7, right? And mine is actually 75.0. I would scroll down to 75.0 and I would hit enter to save that. Now this sensor is calibrated to match my sensor that I put in. Normally these are thermistors, they're usually not needing to be calibrated. They tend to go bad or not bad, they don't tend to drift. So usually you're not messing with that, but you can. So it works the same way for mixed air, outside air, return air, discharge air. Uh, humidity also works the same way, except it's plus or minus 10%. So if you have outside air humidity or return air humidity, you can calibrate those to match whatever you want as well. Previous video, we did all the configuration and basic setup. Here we did the more advanced setup. This thing is up and operational. Obviously there's other screens. You can look at the status screen. You can use the checkout screens and stuff like that. But as far as getting things set up, you are operating at this point.